In this episode we do collision detection. There is just one problem. All that we have to do is just figure out a lot of math. Which Christian tries to solve with paint. Oh lord help me, I'm back to my old self again. But we eventually get there and the nonsense quickly increases. Ha <laughs> ha, baby! Mm, hi everybody, welcome, welcome to our little shmup tutorial. This is LazyDesk Academy. I am Christian and you are about to learn how to make shmups. Uh, we did a tremendous amount of progress in a previous episode. We learned about, um, uh, about objects. We have created, finally we can shoot multiple things. Uh, we can create, sh uh, shoot multiple bullets uh, and we can, as you can see, we can also have uh, enemies. So it's time to make those things interact. Bullets, enemies and our ship s need to interact with each other. Which means we are going to tackle collision detection today. It's, this is going to be the key episode. This is going to be the the bottleneck that we're going to get through. Be afterwards, things should get a lot more relaxed. Uh, but the collision detection is something that I've been dreading a little bit. I have to say, I've been dreading a little bit because in, in the past this used to be a difficulty. And I know from my experience that um, teaching this to students often is a bit confusing because there is a lot of math and equations happening suddenly. It all comes at once. So this time around in this tutorial I've been actually postponing this a little bit. We've been preparing, actually secretly, we've been preparing a lot of skills and ideas that hopefully now will come together and will uh, enable us to um, to pull off collision detection. And the collision detection in Pico 8 is a bit frustrating, a bit confusing, um, because, you know, in something like Unity, you just have your rigid body object, blah, 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 you know, for example, and then it, take care, so it takes care of that for you. Uh, in Pico 8, you have to actually do the math yourself. Uh, but that's also because you know Pico 8 is kind of like more more bare bones kind of programming language. It's kind of like really you are have full control over this, but that's okay. Uh, doing these things is still very useful. Going through this stuff is very useful because when you understand this, if you understand how this works, uh, you, that will allow you to do other things in the future, and and gives you like a like, like a really powerful tool to manipulate things. Right. So let, let us think about collision detection. Let's just like try to frame the problem. Uh, let us start with a simple collision detection. I have an enemy coming at me. If that enemy hits me, if the sprite of the enemy overlaps with the sprite of the ship, I want to lose a heart. I want. I have one heart left. I just want to lose the heart and go to the game over screen. And as you can see, oh. The game over screen, like we couldn't have done this without the game over screen, for example, right? We couldn't have done this without having the heart display. All of the things come together. Also, uh, we couldn't have done this without the enemy. We have to spawn an enemy in the first place, right? There's a lot of things that have to be in place that have to be already there in order for the collision functions to work. Uh, now, I'm going to go into tab number one. And I'm going to think about how uh, a collision function would work. It's going to be a function and it's going to be a function that will return a value. We did that. Draw. Uh, we did this here when we do the blinking, right? We had a return value. We had a function that did a return value. We also used these kinds of functions a lot. We have a btn function, btn0. We have a function that returns true or false, right? Uh, and we want to write that kind of function ourselves. We have a, a function that returns true or false whether a collision has happened or not. But like not just any collision, we want to uh, coll collide two objects with each other. And again, we did kind of did that when we're drawing a sprite, right? We're drawing a sprite and we supplied an argument to that function. We saw, draw me this sprite. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have function that, that, uh, that where we supply two arguments, this sprite and this sprite, this, these two objects. Do dear function, find out if these objects are actually overlapping. Yes or no, true or false. That's the kind of function that we want to write. So I'm just going to draw the uh, general outline. I'm just going to draw, a make a function that just doesn't work, right? 
We're going to call it call for collide. We're going to keep it very, very, very short. A and B. I'm just going to go A and B. Very simple names for objects because the math is going to be a bit crazy. Right? And then lots of math happens, right? And then we're going to return true or false. I'm, I'm going to return false. Like right now, this collision detection will just always fail. It will, it will be a bad collision detection. <laughs> it will just always return false, right? So now we got just all that we have to do is just figure out lots of math, the lots of math portion, and otherwise we're good to go. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so let us now, before we figure out this function, let us think about how we are going to use this function in our program. Because I think like if we know where we're going, if we know where things are heading, then maybe it's going to be easier to understand the actual things. Okay, right. So let us go and update function. Now here, uh, let me just walk you through the update function one more time. So here we are moving the ship. These are button presses. Um, here are still button presses. And then we are moving the ship. We are moving the bullets. We are moving the enemies. Right. And something we can do now is uh, we, there's an animation. But these are animation. These these don't, don't really don't really matter. Uh, there's a collision if we hit the edge. I'm gonna talk about this in a second. Uh, let's just do here uh, collision ship x enemies. And what I want to do now is I want to loop through all of the enemies, iterate through all of the enemies, like so. Like we did when we're moving the enemies. Here are, we are moving the enemies. Now we're doing it again. We're going through all of the enemies. And then I'm going to say, like, if collision between my n and ship, if that's true, then if there was a collision between uh, this uh, one of the enemies from the list and the ship, then, and then we can do something like we're going to lose a life. So... Uh, do we have lives? Where do we have lives? We, we, I think we have a variable called lives, right? There we go, lives. We didn't put that into the ship object, but that's okay. Lives minus equal one. Minus equal. Right? We can also do like lives equals lives minus one. We subtract one life, uh, but uh, there's a shorter version minus equal. I think we never did minus equal. In last episode, we did plus equal, but there's also a minus equal. equal. And that's it. And maybe there's going to be sound effect. Uh, actually, maybe it's going to be good if there is a sound effect so we can actually hear the result. So let us do a sound effect, an explosion sound effect. Okay, maybe a bit slow, uh, faster. Uh, we're going to right click the speed. I'll just do it. Uh, let us modify the volume a little bit. That seems okay. I'm not going to uh, experiment too much with the sound effect. I just want to hear a sound effect so like we, we hear the, <laughs> the collision happening. Our goal now is to make the sound effect play. Uh, so we're going to go SFX. It's going to be sound effect number one. It's the sound effect number one, right? So now we would want to hear the sound effect. Now we would love, love to see us losing lives, but alas, it's not happening. Because the collision function that we have, it's a bogus function right now. It doesn't have any math whatsoever. It just always returns false. You know, it's a broken clock. It's true most of the time, right? Like, I mean, it's uh, yeah, now right now there's no collision. So the, the, the function is true. It just in these cases, it's false <laughs> in the case where it matters. Okay, so how are we going to do collision detection? Here's a shocking truth. A shocking truth. We actually did collision detection already. We just did it already. You just didn't notice because it's so simple. It's not that difficult, actually. Just the math kind of gets a bit complicated. Uh, let me show you. You see here, checking if we hit the edge, this, this part, that's collision detection. This is actually the math that we are about to do. This is just colli what collision detection is. If the ship X value is too big so that we would be off screen, 
we just reset it to zero. That's the, we collided with the screen, we reset it to zero. Actually, we loop through, right? So we reset it to zero. Um, I'm gonna reset it to 120. We're gonna change it so it actually collides. So we can see we collided. And here we collided. We collided with the edge of the screen. That's a, that's a collision that we did, right? Now, okay, this is a collision with a line, so to speak. We, we defined a line and we said, like, if you're, we're checking if you're on the one side of the line or if you're on the other side of the line, right? Like, it's just like this, like a line here. But if you have one line and another line and a line here and a line here, then you describe a box. And that's a box collision kind of thing. And we could do that. I mean, we did, it would make sense actually to make it, uh, uh, because we, right now we can fly off this direction and then, but we cannot, like we can, we collide with the right edge of the screen. We collide with the left edge of the screen. We don't collide with upper edge. Let's just add that. Let's just add that real quick. It's not that difficult. If ship dot uh, y is smaller than zero, then ship dot y equals zero. And then if ship dot y is greater than 120, then ship dot y is equals 120. And I'm going to take all this stuff, all this, this checking, and let me put it at a different space because I think it's better to do it after we move the ship. Because now, right now we move the ship, so right now it's the best time to make sure that we ha haven't collided with anything. Okay? And then we move the bullets, and then we move the enemies, and then we coll collide with the enemies. Right. So now if you run this, top edge, check. Bottom edge, check. Right edge, check. Left edge, check. We collided one box with another. The box of our ship has been collided with the box of the entire screen. Uh, four statements, four if statements we checked. Okay. We now just need to basically repeat these if statements, but we just need to fill in information from not the screen and the ship, but from one object, in this case, our ship and another object. We're just gonna, the math is just gonna be a bit, a bit different. Okay, let me draw you just like so, so we kind of understand where we're going. Let me draw you a beautiful diagram. Oh, Lord help me, I'm back to my old self again. I am going to use the most beautiful, the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful program in the world. We're already, already out of my depth. We are gonna have a box. This is gonna be a box A. I don't, and then we're going to have a second box. It's going to be box B. What we have to do is we're going to go through all of the four edges, the top edge, the bottom edge, the left edge and the right edge. And we're going to see where those edges overlap. Now it's actually, a, I think, like in terms of logic, I think it makes sense to actually check for the opposite. To, to check, basically say like, once we are sure that they do not overlap, then we immediately, like once we found a single piece of evidence that those boxes can never overlap, we just going to immediately return, all right, there is no collision. I think logically that makes a bit uh, like in terms of, of the kind of like if statements that kind of like make, makes a bit more sense. So we're kind of like just looking for an evidence that there is actually no collision because most of the time actually there's not going to be any collision. Like, let's be honest, most of the time the objects won't collide. It's going to be just a, individual frames, you know, where sometimes there is collision, but most of the time you won't be colliding with enemies, right? So it's going to be easier to maybe to check for evidence that there is actually no collision. That's something that we're going to do. So for example, we're going to do something like if we ever have a box like here, right? And then so we can see like, okay, if the top edge, if this edge of the box, if this edge, if that's further down than the bottom edge of the box B, if this edge is further down than this edge, than, than, the, than the bottom edge of B, then you can be sure that there's no collision. Right? Just like, let's me, let's ignore this for a while. In this kind of situation, we can be sure there is no collision because we check like the top edge of, of box A is below the bottom edge of box B. So it actually doesn't matter what the, where the other position is, right? It's just, we know that there is no collision, right? So we can rule out a collision there. Now, if the, the top edge was above the bottom edge, then there might be a collision. 
So we check further. What what about if if the box is here? What about if the red box is here? What about if it's here, right? Well, if it's that f high up, sure, the top edge is not of of the of box A. The top edge of box A, this this edge here, yeah, sure, okay, it's above the bottom edge of of the of the of the bottom box, okay. So we cannot rule out the collision this way, but the bottom edge of box A, this edge, right? This edge, this is now above the top edge of bo box B, right? The bottom edge of box A is above the top edge of box B. So we can rule out the collision like this. So now, hey, no problem, no collision, you know? And the same then we're gonna go with left and right. If the left edge of the box, again, I'm gonna show you. Because, you know, what if the box, okay, what if the box is right here, right? What if they're like this? Because now it's like, okay, okay, so the bottom of the box A is below the top of box B. And the top of box A is above the, the, the bottom of box B. So there, there might be a collision there, right? But now we can also check the, the sideways. So for example, if we know if the left side, the left edge of box A is to the right of the right edge of box B, no collision, no problem, right? There's no collision, there can't be a collision. They're just like, it's too far to the right. The, the red box is too far to the right for a collision to exist. So we can also say like, hey, no collision. And the same thing on, on the other side, right? Uh, we can say that if things look like this, there also can be collision because again, the right edge of, of, of the red box is too far left. It's too far left. It's to the left side of the left edge of box B. So again, no collision. And I know it's like right, left, the left side of the right box of the, you know, it's like, it's it, like verbally, it just gets confusing a little bit. So we need to like step very closely through this logic. Uh, but yeah, once we rule out all of the, uh, once we check all of the edges and we immediately, you know, latch on to any kind of opportunities to rule out collisions. One, once we go through all the checks and we couldn't rule out the collision, then the opposite is actually true. There is actually a collision. <laughs> it means that the boxes are actually overlapping. And in this case, we can say, okay, there, we tried to rule out the collision, we couldn't. So therefore there is a collision. Therefore things look like this. Right, so let us put this logic, let us put this logic into some code. Let us try to figure things out. Now, I was talking about the left edge and right edge of the of this entire thing. So let us just create first these things. Let us calculate these things first, because I mean, that's going to be very important. Steps. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to just create a whole bunch of helper variables that, that kind of help us boil down this math a little bit, right? So we're going to go local a underscore left. I have a little I always look in the corner here because I have a little helper here because I like to me it's also a little bit like confusing. Uh, a left, we're gonna find out what the left edge of A is. Where is the coordinates of the left edge of um, the uh, A object of the A sprite? Well, that's just gonna be A dot X because as we said, uh, the left a uh, top corner of a sprite is where the coordinates of a sprite are. That's how what Pico 8 does. And that's so we're gonna keep that to that default. And we're gonna say, okay, uh, the left edge of, of a sprite is just gonna be the position of the sprite or the X position. And actually this is true of B as well. So we're gonna be gonna just do this, this as well. B dot X, that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna, we created the two helper variables, A left, B left. Perfect. Now, you already, can already see that where this is coming, a top, the top edge of the screen. Uh, now we're talking about the Y coordinates. This was X coordinates. Now we're talking about the Y, the how, you know, what position the top edge is of, 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 our, um, of our little object. Well, that's gonna be just a dot Y. 
again uh, top left corner top left corner which means left position but also the, the top position are all defined by x and y these are the easy ones these are the easy ones left and top are easy to calculate from where we are okay b dot y is going to be top edge the position of the top edge of the b now we want to get to the, the more difficult ones. So local a underscore right, the right edge of a, the worst right edge of a. And it's like, okay, so the right edge of a is going to be uh, the position of the sprite plus the width of the sprite. So we're going to go a dot. Now we, we kind of left and that, that's intentional. And so far in my prototype, all of the sprites are just eight time eights. I'm just using little sprites. We can use bigger sprites. I'm going to show you how to use bigger sprites later. But I intentionally kept everything at eight times eight sprites. So our collision detection is going to be a lot easier. And this is now the payoff now <laughs> because it could have been so much worse. <laughs> I tell you. And probably some of you created maybe bigger sprites. And now you're paying the price. <laughs> I'm gonna don't worry, we're gonna get into this later. But yeah, we're gonna go a.x, the position of the of the a box of the a sprite plus the width of the sprite. And that's eight pixels. But that's wrong. True story, that's wrong. It's not eight. We have to add seven. Why seven? Well, let's imagine this was our sprite. Let's imagine a sprite was a single pixel, right? Then the left edge and the right edge are going just gonna be the same. Right? So if the, but a single pixel means that the width and the height of the sprite are technically one because it's one height, you know, one pixel in height and one pixel in width. So it's kind of weird that uh, something that has a width of one and height of one, uh, that the math for this would be like, you know, the right edge is the same as the, as the, on the same X position as the left edge and the top edge is the same position as the bottom edge, right? If we had a, if that was the sprite, a uh, two times two sprite, then the left edge is at x and the right edge is at x plus one, even though the width and height of the, of the sprite is two. You always add one less. In order to calculate the right edge, you always add one less than the width of the sprite. You always want one less. And that's kind of like a typical one-off problem. It's just like, you know, it's just like, you know, starting count with zero and so forth, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, what? I have four fingers, <laughs> how that works, you know? It's just because you started with zero. These kind of like, it's, I think it's kind of like a similar situation here. And that's just like, you know, that's just how it is. It's just the width of the sprite minus one. So instead of eight, we add seven. If your sprite was bigger, if your sprite was 16, for example, it was two sprites, uh, then you would add 15 and not 60. It's just how it is. Uh, you, uh, it's kind of like, okay, how am I supposed to know this? You know, it's like, it's just something that you learn with experience, you know, when you do these things a lot of times. And it's not a big deal. You can just add, add eight here, it's fine. You could just add eight and it will still work. The collision detection generally would still work. It would be just a little bit, sometimes there would be collision where visually it seems like there's no overlap. And you would then maybe experimentally maybe figure out that the, that it's just going to be seven, not eight. Okay. So now we're going to use the same thing to figure out what the bottom is. It's just bottom uh, is a y plus seven. It's the same principle, and the same thing else applies to b. It's just the same thing. It's just the same thing. So b right and b bottom is b x and b. All in all, the math is not too confusing. It's just a lot of it. And it's just like, you know, A, B and X and Y, top, bottom, you know, it's just like, it's just like a lot of things to, to that are very similar to each other that it gets very, very easy to con get confused. But don't worry, it's just the same things. So we're finding out left edge, right edge, and the position, the low coordinates of the left edge, right edge, top edge and bottom edge. That's, not, that's, what, that's all we're gonna try. We're trying to find out this collision box of a and b and we store the result values in these little helper variables that are kind of like verbally understandable 
okay? And now we're gonna go through four statements that will check those different values against each other and return false if we can rule out a collision. Let us just go through what I talked about. For example, we know that if a underscore top, if the top edge of one of, of the red box, if that was greater below b underscore bottom, the bottom edge of the b box, of the blue box, then return false. Uh, the end is important here. I, I also like we we didn't do that before, but I just want to show you like it, this is just like this statement. Yeah, it's the same statement, right? You can do a statement like this. That's fine. Maybe you should even keep it around. I don't know. Uh, but you can roll up this multiple lines of statement into one line. You can do that. You just roll it on, up into one line. It's fine. It's it's good. It's it's just like it makes everything a bit compact, and you just know that it's always return false and at the end. Okay, so now in this case, we know the top edge of one box is below the bottom edge of the other box. There's no way there's gonna be a collision. No matter you know, where they are in the x coordinates, the y coordinates make it so that there are just not gonna be any collision. So we don't have to check for anything else. Done, solve, solve problem. Okay. And now we can just turn it, this thing around and we can say like, well, it was the, the other way around. If the top edge of B is above, you know, below the bottom edge of A, then there's also not going to be a collision, right? So we just like switch the boxes around. And if the opposite, if they switch the boxes around, there's also not going to be a collision. That's good. Two of the statements are already checked off. And now we're going to do the same thing, except top and bottom is going to be now left and right. So we're going to go if a left, if that's greater, if the left edge of one box is greater than the right edge of the other box, if the left edge of the box is further to the right than the right of the, of, of the box, then it doesn't matter when they're, when they, where they are in the uh, y coordinates. It's just, you just know there's not going to be a collision. And then we just turn out, turn, you know, switch around A and B and like this. Easy piece of breeze. But now we said that, okay, we try to rule out the collision. It's always return false, return false, return false, because all these checks are checking for um, situations where there is no collision, where we are, know that the edges are just apart from each other, that there's no, ed no collision. But now we, we had all our four checks and we could not rule out a collision. In this case, collision. So, and the, at the end, we'd return true. The last statement is gonna be returned true. And that works because as I already said, whenever there is like, when, when one of the if statement is true and we return false, that ends, in this case, the entire function is being quit uh, and the other if statements are not being even checked. We just return false, just immediately returns false and there's never an opportunity to return true afterwards. It's just like immediately abandoned. Only if all of the four if statements, if all of these are false, if there is no opportunity to return uh, false, only then we're gonna return true. Okay, that was, that was lots of math. <laughs> That we can now get rid of. Okay, so we're going through, uh, you know, through this entire math. We're trying to uh, to rule out the collision, but again, at the end, maybe there is a collision, and then we're going to return true. Let's see if this works. I'm going to save. I'm going to run. So far, so good. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> again. Okay, it worked, something happened, but what happened? I'm, I'm confused that the lives were, were not deducted. I thought LS would be detected, but we did the S, we heard the sound effect, right? We heard the sound effect. The only problem that we had is we heard the sound effect, but it we heard it multiple times, right? And that's the problem is, and that's a typical problem is that 
uh, you have to react to a collision. It's not just about detecting a collision. A big part of collision detection, a big part of what makes collision detection difficult is not just detecting it, but also reacting to it, but also being like, ah, there was a collision, you know, and now we're going to do something so that next frame, next time we're going to check for the collision, it's no longer there. And in this case, we collided with a, with a ship. Okay, there was a sound effect. We did, uh, subtracted some lives apparently, but it didn't work. And then on the next frame, we check again for the collision and it, it happens again. So we get like this, this, uh, <laughs> this funny, uh, this rapid fire kind of effect because we're firing the, um, the collision sound. We're firing it over and over again in subsequent frames because there's constantly collision with the, with the enemy. We, we didn't do any reaction that would prevent the collision from happening again in the next frame. And there's, you know, different things that we can do here. I think a very simple thing that we can do here is just delete the enemy from the enemies list. Uh, not necessarily something that we want later on down the line. Maybe we want to have enemies that, you know, <laughs> because then you could just like, if you have a boss enemy that has a lot of health, you can just ram it and you would lose a life, but also the enemy would die, you know, maybe not something that we want, but um, that gives you a better understanding. Like, okay. Now it's just one sound effect. Now I want to get down to the bottom of the lives problem because, you know, the lives were supposed to go down, but uh, it, it doesn't look like this. It, it, it doesn't seem like this. So I'm going to get down to the bottom. Let's, let's look at the draw function. Uh, lives. Here's lives. Ah, I see. See how we, here we have this code that resets life to one. Then we did that because we want to see how different lives work uh, when we are drawing the different lives. We wanted to like see what, what three lives look like, what four lives look like, and so forth. That was like a little little scaffolding there, there that we had. We had forgot to delete this. So now we run this. Oh, now we actually see three lives. And now you see I lost one life. Again, watch the number of hearts. I lost one life. Perfect. Perfect. Mm. And now something I want to actually see. I want to actually see the, the game over screen. So I've set the lives to one at the beginning. This is the start game function in the first tab. I'm going to set the starting number of lives to one. You see, it's one. Now it's at zero. And now what I want to see is a game over screen. It didn't happen, but now we can implement this. Right. So uh, let me see an update function. Uh, previously, we had it set to a button or I had it set to a button, maybe your button do something else, that's fine. Um, so we're going to delete this, so it's not on a button. And here, uh, after we do the collision with the enemies, we're going to do a little check if lives uh, is smaller or equals zero, because maybe there's more collision happening, maybe we actually got, got in the negative life. So I want to make sure that I cover everything, right? With smaller or equals zero, then And here I'm going to say um, mode equals over. I'm going to set the mode to game over. And sure, we're going to animate the, the star, stars and so forth, but that's okay. Uh, this is where where we actually go in game over. You could even, if you just want to like, make sure that nothing happens after we do this check, that would maybe reverse the check or something like this, you could also do a return here. Just return and nothing, just return. And that would just quit the function prematurely. There wouldn't be any animation of the flame or anything. It's just like immediately game over, right? Bam. Isn't that great? I am very happy about this. So as I said, um, this is collision detection. This is general collision detection. We have this beautiful, beautiful function. It is a bit verbose. We create a whole bunch of variables. But creating those variables here helped us keep the text and the, the, compli the complication in the if statements a bit simpler. You could get those variables, you could get rid of all those local variables and just calculate everything in line here. You could just, you know, just every time there is a, a B underscore left, B underscore left, where is it? B underscore left, you can just drop in B dot X, right? You just, you don't need the helper variables technically. Uh, but just like seeing the draw properties of b.x, b.x plus 7, you know, that's like not really uh, 
mentally understandable for us. So that's why I have created all these local functions. Uh, but yeah, that's the collision detection here. Um, if you want to, if you feel like you're up to it, you can maybe try to uh, to uh, uh, simplify this. And actually, this is the point where we're gonna go to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. All right, and the doggy zone is gonna be pretty state for straightforward this time around. I'm gonna give you three tasks, and all of these tasks we're gonna actually tackle for sure in the next episode. I'm just gonna like give you the things that, I, that we still have to do. First is now we have a collision, uh, collision with the enemy and um, and the uh, the ship, but also I want to next to also program a collision with the bullets and the enemies. I want us to be able to shoot at enemies. So the first task for the doggy zone is make sure, uh, program this for the bullets and enemies. A bit of a different situation because you're know, not going through an array of enemies and colliding it with the same object. Now we're colliding two different arrays with objects with each other. <laughs> so that's kind of like a bit complicated, but maybe you can figure it out. Uh, another thing that is maybe completely different, that's, that's maybe if, if you have enough of this and it's like, oh man, my, my brain is burning, let's try something different. How about something simpler? I don't like how you have to press a button to shoot the next one. I want to be able to hold the button. But if I hold the button, it's kind of stupid because now a single shot comes out and then you have the rapid shot. And there is also no way for us to control the frequency of the rapid shot. So I want to have a, a consistently spaced uh, shot happening that is consistently spaced, you know, when I, and that co comes out when I keep pressing the button. So if I keep pressing the button, I want to see the shots coming out at, at the same frequency and not just like one shot, then a pause, and then, you know, multiple shots after each other. I just want to see the multiple shots coming after each other immediately. And I want to be able to control the spacing between the shots. Third thing, back to collision again. Um, we said that right now, you know, when you get collide, you, the enemy disappears. What if the enemy stays sticks around and instead there's kind of like, you quite, quite often see this when you get hit, uh, there's like an un, unvulnerability state for a couple of seconds, you know, where you, your ship is blinking and you can't be hit anymore for a second. So you don't get hit immediately afterwards, right? So I want this invulnerability state. Uh, this is something I also want to be working on in the next episode. And if you can figure this out already now, that would be great. That was the Doggy Zone, three challenges. And this is also the moment where I will say thank you so much for all the beautiful people that are so excited about this series and actually decided to support uh, me and the series on, on coffee.com. Thank you so much. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazy devs. All right, and yes, that was this episode. This, this, was, this was a lot to handle, right? This, this, not, wasn't, this wasn't simple, but we did it. We got through it. Everything's working now, hopefully understandable. On the next episode, we are gonna use this as the groundwork, as the ground layer, and we're gonna build on top of that. We're gonna add now more features now that everything's working. We can add more features. We can make things react to collisions. That's coming up on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.